Hello friends, welcome back to another Alpha League sesh with me, AVB. If you're new to the channel, this is where we normally cover all the latest products and projects that are getting us closer to mass adoption. However, we can't ignore the fact that Nier has been pumping this week. You may have seen all these massive green candles that have taken the price of the Nier token from 10 all the way to $17.38. Or you may have noticed that Nier has been steadily climbing up the coin market cap rankings. It is now sitting comfortably in the top 20. And I may add less than $1 billion away from flipping Polygon. So while we prefer to focus on product and user experience and the best practices that will lead to mass adoption, we can't ignore the fact that price is one of the things that draw the most attention to a project. So as Nier is now in the spotlight and there are hundreds of people wondering why is Nier Protocol pumping? During this video, we will be covering everything there is to be known about the Nier Protocol, including the tech stack and why they say that Nier is Ethereum 2.0 delivered. And we'll also be looking at the different verticals in the Nier ecosystem that you may want to be paying attention to. We'll be covering the beginning of the DeFi summer, we'll be covering NFTs, we'll be covering gaming and much, much more. There are timestamps down below, so if you want to scroll through and jump to the section that is of the most interest to you, you can do so. Let's dive right in. Now, the first thing that we have to mention is that Nier is a three-headed beast. What does that mean? That means that when you try to understand the Nier protocol and specifically the Nier token price action, you can't just look at Nier. Nier is a layer one. In that sense, it is similar to Ethereum or to Solana or to Avalanche. So when we think of the Nier ecosystem, we have to think of Nier and all the applications built on Nier. And now we also have to think of Aurora. Aurora is an Ethereum virtual machine blockchain, similar to Binance Smart Chain or Phantom or the whatever C chain on Avalanche. However, it is the Ethereum virtual machine deployed as a smart contract on top of Nier. That means that you get the exact same experience you do on Ethereum, including the ability to deploy existing Solidity code. Aurora is the only EVM that has a partnership with Consensus to get all the same tooling. You can use MetaMask. However, because it is deployed in Nier, it, it inherits near scalability and security. That means that Aurora can expand infinitely. We'll be diving into near scalability in a minute. The second blockchain that is deployed on top of Nier is Octopus Network. Octopus, it's a parachain blockchain, which enables anyone to deploy an app chain. In very simple terms, it is basically the best version of Polkadot deployed on top of Nier. I'll be doing a separate video on the Octopus network, but this is one to be massively bullish about. So now that we have covered the three headed beast and we've made note that there can and will be more virtual machines deployed on top of Nier soon, wink, wink. This takes us right where we want to be with the Nier technology. Naval has said recently that Nier is Ethereum 2.0 delivered. What does that mean? With Ethereum, there is one chain. It can process about 14 to 16 transactions per second. And when there is demand for more than that, there is a queue that's called a mempool. The way that Ethereum works right now is if there is a queue, you can offer to pay more. It is an auction system where you can pay more to go to the front of the queue. Ethereum hit product market fit just about the same time as it hit a massive wall with scalability, which made Ethereum extremely expensive. What Ethereum 2.0 proposes to do is to be a sharded blockchain. A sharded blockchain means that it goes from having just a one chain to having multiple chains running in parallel. Near right now is a fully sharded blockchain. It has already been implemented. There are four shards running in parallel. Now, there is a kicker here. With the Ethereum sharded model, you may not be able to solve the scalability problem because you still have one problem to overcome. And that is that in Ethereum 2.0, the shards cannot communicate. So even though you could theoretically scale Ethereum infinitely because you can deploy many shards, most people will still want to be on the same shard. You may want to be on the DeFi shard or you may want to be on the gaming shard. And that even limits what games can do if they can't communicate to the DeFi shard. I don't want to get too technical, but I will leave the comments in the section. Nier introduces a few revolutionary concepts. 
to the extent that for most of last year, when people talked about Nier, they were a little bit skeptical about whether the team was going to be able to deliver or not. And I think that's why the price is exploding now, because there has been a lot of people sitting on the sidelines waiting to see if what the Nier team is proposing can actually be delivered. The Nier team is comprised of gigabrains. What they're proposing to do, it's not something that an everyday man or woman could do. What are they doing? The Nier system is novel in two ways. The first one is that it is dynamic. What does it mean? That the network can expand or contract on demand. It is designed in such a way that the developers or the users don't really know or care which shard they are on. And that takes us to the most important bit. Nier has an asynchronous environment with two block finality time. What does that mean? All that means is that the shards can communicate. As I said, developers do not have to worry or care about which shard their application is on. Users don't have to worry or care about which shard they're on. The system will automatically expand on demand and being able to expand horizontally means that transactions remain consistently cheap. A few minutes ago, we just mentioned that the massive advantage that Aurora has as an EVM and that Octopus has as a power chain of being deployed on top of Nier is that they inherit the Nier scalability and security model. What does it mean? Aurora right now has their own shard and if there is a ton of activity on Aurora, they too will get more and more shards horizontally to enable Aurora to be able to scale in ways that other EVMs are not able to scale right now and to remain consistently cheap. Remember, if you can scale horizontally infinitely, you, you don't need an auctioning system. But this leads us to the second point around tokenomics. The Near Protocol has by default what Ethereum implemented recently with EIP-1559. There's two main components to it. The first one is every single transaction in Near burns 70% of the gas and 30% goes to the smart contract. So there is a revenue stream there for smart contract developers. Now, this is massive because theoretically, at some point, the Neo blockchain can and will become deflationary. Remember, three-header plurge, every transaction on Aurora is a transaction on Neo, and it is burning Neo gas. And this is a big one because most people don't realize. The Aurora team made a very conscious decision to make the gas on Aurora be Ethereum because we want to ensure that there is maximum compatibility with Ethereum mainnet. However, even though the user is paying their gas using Ethereum, that transaction is still burning near at the near mainnet level. So there is a novel conversion there on the back end. Likewise with Octopus, the thing that really drew me to near is that the Gigabrain team solved the scalability challenge. The real challenge, once you have a network that can scale and is cheap, is adoption. And quite honestly, there is a lot of friction in the crypto world. So from day one, the team has embedded into the near protocol so many things that make it extremely powerful for developers to build experiences that resemble Web 2.0. I'm just going to briefly mention a couple of them. Near has by default human readable names. So my near account is Alejandro.near. And they have very novel account permissioning system, which allows you to cover the gas for users to pre-approve transactions with a very limited scope. So I'll give you a really quick example of how much this improves the user experience. The first example I love to give people is nearnames.com. This is one of the very early uh, applications of the near protocol. So don't be misled by how simple it is. However, I love this one because it achieves two things. The first one is to onboard people to the near protocol. And the second one is to demonstrate how powerful it is. So I've logged into near names with my wallet and as you can see, all it is, is it enables you to reserve the name for someone to preload the account with near and then to give it to them. So normally what I do is I send them uh, the link by their email address so that they can retrieve it when it is safe for them to do then and only then it gives them the private key. This functionality has been extended recently to what they call near drops. So you can have QR codes when the user scans. It has been preloaded. It enables them to create an account. You can give them an NFT. They can basically change the equation of the user experience and the user journey to be able to embed a crypto experience anywhere in the world. This is extremely powerful. Now, the next example of a supreme user experience is Capsule Social, recently renamed to Blockchain. Capsule Social is a decentralized publishing platform. I will be making a video about them specifically soon. 
what I like is that they have chosen Nier as part of their stack. And it is probably one of the first and best examples of a company that has a mission to have a real product. They're solving a real problem for real producers. And they're able to seamlessly use Nier as part of their stack. So I'll be linking them in the show notes below. And now moving on to DeFi. Look, DeFi has definitely been a major component for the price bump. And if you've been following my channel, you would know because I've been covering that for months. So what exactly is making the needle move on DeFi? If you recall, DeFi summer started at around the same time that leverage and lending kicked in on Ethereum. That would be Avi and Compound. And we've seen the exact same cycle with Solana and other blockchains. Why? Because people are able to put down their assets to borrow USD stablecoin to buy more of the asset. The two fundamental components here being the ability to leverage and most importantly, being early in the cycle. You don't want to be leveraging when the coin is already 10x pumped because then you're vulnerable to dips. So this perfect storm is occurring on near right now. So I'm going to do a very quick lay of the land of all the existing DeFi protocols you should be checking out and keeping an eye on. Most of the platforms that I'm about to mention have a dedicated video of the time that they launched. First, let's do the automated market makers or decentralized exchanges. On Near, we've got Ref Finance. Ref Finance is a blue chip of the Near protocol. It is a Uniswap equivalent. The first version of Ref Finance was actually coded by Ilya, one of the Near co-founders, and handed over to the community. Ref Finance enjoys the support of Proximity Labs, which is the DeFi wing of Near, and they have some pretty big names among their investors. Ref is probably the best place to perform swaps right now, and it has some very appealing opportunities in the farming section. I would recommend you check it out. Disclaimer, I, I currently sit on the Ref Finance community board. Next one up is Jumbo. Jumbo launched a few weeks on mainnet. However, note that they have had limited functionality up until now. Their farming, which is when I expect things will take off, will be happening around mid-April. So remember that with farms, there is an allocated amount of rewards daily. And whoever is in that farm gets a reward. So it really pays off to be early. Make sure that you follow Jumbo and consider participating in those farms early on. The, the third player in your main that would really strongly suggest you follow is Tonic. I'll be sharing the social media handles in the description below. I'm actually not sure how far Tonic is from launching on near mainnet. However, I do want to say that Tonic is basically the near equivalent of Serum on Solana. What does it mean? Tonic is going to provide a full order book experience. And it is going to be an open platform. Anyone can build trading on top of Tonic with their easy to use SDK and developer platforms. I believe Tonic is going to 10x DeFi on Near by enabling many projects to build on top in the same way that Serum did on Solana. Now, moving on to DeFi on Aurora. The king so far of automated market makers on Aurora is Trisolaris, which fun fact has been named after the three body problem book, a book which I absolutely love and I would recommend to everyone to read. Then we have WannaSwap. I've made videos about these two in the past, so go check those out. The third contender is Nearpad. And I'll also mention Rose as a stable swap. And now moving on to the lending protocols. I believe these are largely the main contributors towards the near pop over the last week. So the lending platforms in near have been live for just over a month, depending on which one you look at. Borrow Cash specifically went live just over a week ago. This is a place where you can go and deposit your near or preferably your ST near, which stands for staked near. That means that you can earn staking rewards, which are about 10% on near, while borrowing assets against it. As long as the interest rate that you're paying on those assets is below 10%, and as long as the price of near is the same or higher than when you bought it, the loan pays for itself. So Borrow Cash is live right now on near mainnet. I'd recommend you go check it out. Borrow Cash is also supported by Proximity Labs. They also count some major investors in their arsenal. So I'm very bullish for Borrow Cash. The next two players are over on Aurora. So Bastion Protocol has over $400 million deposited in just one month. And Bastion has something really cool that they have realms or basically segregated markets. 
This is enabling them to do a lot of experimentation. This is something that would really keep an eye on. Some of the early realms that they've created, it's a degen loot box realm. So basically you can put down S in your S collateral, borrow near, and then stake it again to leverage many times over. The next one is origami. Origami is also close to $400 million deposited. And you're going to also deposit assets to borrow USDs. Special mention to Metapool. The one thing you would have noticed is that all three platforms have recently enabled ST near as collateral. As I just mentioned, borrowing money against staked near as opposed to regular near makes a huge difference. With regular near, it's dead capital. With ST near, you're earning an income and you're helping decentralize the network. So how does it work? Metapool isn't actually a validator. Metapool is a smart contract that delegates to all the existing validators on the network and it gives you ST near as proof or receipt that you've got your near deposited there. By using Metapool, you're helping decentralize the network and keep it secure and you're able to participate on the growing DeFi ecosystem using ST near. Metapool is also a really cool early example of how apps can leverage the Rainbow Bridge and how Having Aurora deployed as a smart contract on Nier gives you extra benefits. So you can stake your Nier directly on Nier Mainnet. I'll put the link on the show notes below. And more recently, Metapool released a version of their app, which you may see the difference on the screen. It's got the Aurora logo at the top and it's got some yellow background. This allows you to stake wrap Nier from Aurora directly. So remember, because we're staking on the Nier network, it has to be done on Nier Mainnet. However, the way that Metapool achieves this is by making smart contract calls over the rainbow bridge. So they receive the user's wrap near, they send it down to near mainnet, they unwrap it, they stake it to obtain ST near, then they send the ST near back up the rainbow bridge to hand over the user ST near. All these takes seconds. So this is a perfect segue for the, the rainbow bridge is a bridge built by the near core team now maintained by the Aurora team. And it is an absolute dream to use. I am not exaggerating when I'm saying that this is probably the best bridge out there. It is proper, trustless, and decentralized, and it has amazing user experience. So as you can see, the Rainbow Bridge is a triangle which connects Ethereum, Near, and Aurora. You can transfer in any direction. A transfer from Ethereum to Near will cost you three to four bucks. I'll just quickly show you the interface because it is so easy to use. So the rainbow bridge automatically identifies the coins you have in your wallet. And the thing that I like the most is it has excellent contextual information. It has all the information about what's happening right now. What are the next steps? So it really guides the user through. It is also extremely fast. Now, I just mentioned with a medical example that the rainbow bridge is able to do contract calls. This is huge because that means that not only can you send assets such as a USDT from Ethereum to near or to Aurora or near from near to Ethereum, it also allows you to make contract calls. So on the example, Metapool is performing several contract calls over the rainbow bridge back and forth to create the best possible user experience for the users. I can also give you a bit of an alpha. I know that Ref Finance right now is working on aggregating liquidity from all of the DEXs on Aurora so that they can offer the users on your mainnet the best prices possible. And if the user is performing a swap and the best price is available on Aurora, they automatically make the contract calls over the Rainbow Bridge, swap on Aurora and bring the coins over. This is also extremely powerful with DAOs. You can run your DAO on near, which is much, much cheaper. And the DAO can perform contract calls on Ethereum or on Aurora. We will get into the DAO infrastructure in just a minute. There are two more bridges that are worth mentioning. The first one is Old Bridge. I actually quite like Old Bridge. I think it works really well. If you go to the Old Bridge interface and you select near, it automatically shows you the blockchains that you could send assets to. And when you select the blockchain, it shows you the assets within that blockchain. So for instance, yesterday, I very easily sent some Solana over to near to do some farming on Ref. Ref also has some really appealing farming opportunities for the ABR token. That is an Old Bridge token. And I entered the soul farm with the coins I sent over. 
You may also see cello on the farm, exactly the same. So all you have to do is select near, pair it with cello, and it will show you the coins available. And that's how you get some cello or some CUSD into near. The last thing I want to say is that Old Bridge actually serves near and Aurora. So you can also experiment by choosing Aurora and pairing it with other blockchains and see what is available for you. The second bridge is multi-chain. Multi-chain works with Aurora at the moment. Same as with Old Bridge, what you have to do is first on the right, you choose the blockchain that you want to send from and the blockchain you want to send to. And then it will show you a list of the tokens that are available for sending. Now, moving on to DAOs. Near has supreme DAO infrastructure and it is called Astro DAO. This is a project that was created initially by the Near Foundation. It has been handed over by the community. It is an example of creating an extremely powerful backend smart contract and then creating a very friendly front end. I'll put the link down in the section below if you want to check the website and all the descriptions here. I want to jump straight into the action. So on the main Astro DAO interface, we can see by order of when they were created, there has been a very strong push by the Near Foundation for users to adopt DAO, especially when it comes to receiving funding. So going over to my DAO section, I mentioned earlier that I sit on the Ref Finance Community Board. So this is how Ref Finance, the decentralized exchange, is actually managing all their affairs. As you can see, they have over $126 million in this DAO on Astro DAO. Let's go over to the proposal section. Okay, this is gonna be a brilliant example. The proposal goes up. We can see a list of the people that have voted. I have not voted yet. So I'm going to look up this proposal on the governance forum. I have already read it and I agree to it, but I'll just quickly show you. So this is what it looks like. And as a sitting community board member, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna vote for this right now, approve. And just like that, I was a final vote. Now you can see how the contract shows approved. So I'm just over at the community DAO where I want to show you the groups functionality. So as you can see, community DAO has created many groups to cover some of our community initiatives. And you can see how members can be part of one or more groups. This is very powerful because when you put up a proposal, you will have the ability to tailor the governance, namely which groups can vote for which proposals. Astro DAO also has the ability to have polls so you can put up questions and different groups and different users can participate. If you go to the treasury, we can see all the tokens that it is currently holding, the historical values, all the transactions. DAOs are also able to hold NFTs. Let's see that there are some interesting NFTs sitting on this community DAO. I wonder where they came from. And finally, there is also a bounties section where you can actually put up requests for people to perform work. If you're interested, I'm going to leave all the links in the section below so you can check it out. And now moving on to NFTs. NFTs on Nier have been exploding, which is yet another th sign of a healthy rotation. First it was Ethereum, then it was Solana, and now it is Nier. If the NFTs in Nier, the place you go is Paris.id. This is to date the largest exchange. If you scroll over to the top collections, you can see the top collections by weekly volume. And then with each collection, you can go see their community on Twitter and Discord. Really brief history of near NFTs, which not many people actually know. If you are a real OG, you have a near punk. Near punks were created by Monstre.near. Near punks are OG so back in the day that there isn't actually a collection for near punks. You'll find them uploaded one by one by the artist themselves. They are OG indeed that people joining the ecosystem now don't even know much about them. And all the existing holders are actually not flipping them. Lucky for you, you can actually get one of these near punks relatively cheap if you are interested in joining the crew of OGs. Next in the pipeline is Near Misfits. Disclosure, I am a co-founder of Near Misfits. So at the time that Near Misfits launched, we could see that the Solana and Ethereum ecosystems were exploding, but there was not much happening in the NFT space on Near. 
So we partnered with 10K, which is a platform for launching NFTs. They have launched many projects since. And together we collaborated to build this technical platform that we were the first ones to use. And we introduced a series, which we're very happy to see have kickstarted an NFT bonanza on Nier. Very shortly after Nier Misfits came, Nier Nodes. Nier Nodes are still very active and leading the Nier ecosystem. I will leave some Twitter handles of people that you should be following in the Nier NFT if you were interested. And then finally, I want to close with Nier Gaming. So for gaming, and this is perhaps the biggest alpha of them all, I am going to introduce you to the Human Guild. The Human Guild is a very powerful funding arm of the Near Protocol. They sit at the same level as Proximity, which has been tasked with funding DeFi or Near. Human Guild has been hard at work for over a year onboarding many games to the Near ecosystem. They currently have a pipeline of over 50 games. And the most exciting thing about the Human Guild is that it is a growing community. All these games are learning from each other and the community is supporting each other. Why am I bullish in gaming? For two reasons. The first one is there aren't many blockchains that can realistically handle gaming. Every time you have a successful game, they break the blockchain. I believe that game is going to be the real use case where Nier proves itself. Second, I am extremely bullish in gaming because we need things for people to do on the blockchain that are not you know, purely crypto plays. It's not just a farming or it's not just making money. Gaming is something that can capture people's imaginations and time and enable them to use the blockchain consistently day to day, regardless of whether it is a bear market or a bull market. Keep an eye on the Human Guild. They have been working for months on games, take a while to build. But when these are released, they are going to rock the space. Now, I am aware that this video has been extremely long. So if you have any questions or comments, drop them in the section below. I'm just going to sum it up with near price pump. It's not just a regular price pump. This is the flywheel spinning. The higher the price, the more attention, the more people realize the technology, more developers, more high quality projects, more real users, more price pump. That flywheel is not going to stop spinning. This is not financial advice, but I suspect this is very early in the cycle and I hope you're listening and that we all make it.